Are we going to see the comeback of austerity in 2024 in Europe? Education, health, culture, these are things that glue all societies together. This is why we cannot allow fiscal rules that would significantly harm these sectors that are so indispensable to our societies. There's still this ideology that public spending is bad for the economy, that actually it's bad for society because markets know better, that debt is bad. And this is precisely at the heart of the discussion in the Council, that is where the 27 governments are negotiating, and in the European Parliament. And let me tell you, at the moment, it doesn't look good. Because indeed, what we see is the traditional right, helped by a significant chunk of the far right and the liberals, going back to hard austerity, and I must say, with the complicitness of a big bulk of the Social Democrats. We are facing big, big, big challenges the coming years. Well, climate change is obviously a big one, but now we have war on our doorstep, we have aging of societies, we have the digital transition. All this will require massive investments, of course, from the private sector, but almost half of it will be from the public sector. And therefore, we need to make sure that we can finance these investments. And of course, the zealots of austerity will say, no problem. Let us cut elsewhere. But what is elsewhere? Where is that? Well, basic goods like health, like education, like infrastructure, like networks. These are things that basically states have to do. Is it a problem for governments to incur debt? Well, it depends for what. You know, when you as an individual buy a house or an apartment, well, you get into debt because you cannot pay usually, well, most normal people can't pay that just cash. Likewise, when companies are making investments for a new research and development or new facilities, well, they go through debt as well because they can't fund everything that will serve maybe 20, 30, 40 years uh, with one year's revenue. So getting into debt is not per se a problem. Now, is there too much public debt in Europe? That's a good question. In Europe, the debt to GDP ratio, that is the stock of debt compared to the wealth created in a year uh, by the European Union, is 90%. 90%? Well, the treaties say 60%. Yeah, but that figure has absolutely no scientific value. The best proof is United States are 126% and Japan 263%. And they're still alive and kicking. Now, that means that in Europe, we have leeway to borrow more. And by the way, there's many investors who are prepared to lend money to the European Union member states and to the union itself. So we can borrow more. Now, some member states are in a more difficult situation. I agree with that. I mean, Italy, Greece, Belgium, uh, uh, France are above 100% uh, of public debt. But that even is still manageable, as long as, of course, the money that is borrowed is invested for a productive use, for something that will create value for society. And in the most extreme cases, well, then maybe what we should do is borrow together. And that's what we did during COVID. Well, we did that for temporary purposes, meeting the pandemic. Why can't we do that for permanent purposes or at least for the next 20 years? Because, well, the, the purpose of public spending is to improve the situation of the society, enable basic goods. Of course, you might say part of these investments must be funded by taxes. And it's true that some taxpayers who should be the big taxpayers end up paying veterinary low taxes. Big wealth, big companies end up being the ones benefiting most from tax competition between member states and tax evasion. Well, we need to go after them and make sure that indeed they contribute their fair share, which will allow us to borrow less. So if you really want to do sustainable public finances, you look at the income and that's the taxation aspect. And then you target the debt that you create for long-term sustainable investments. But for that, you need the political will. And at the moment, the only, the voice that is most heard is the voice of the zealots of austerity.